stay with me. Let love and stop. Let love and stop. Hold me now. <laughs> Everybody, it's Big Anklevich here. Uh, I'm doing a uh, ankle cast. Haven't done one in a little while, so uh, I'm stumbling over every word, I guess. Um, anyways, uh, I thought for fun I would try and do shorter ankle casts. I've gotten uh, several people who have said that was the way to go, especially now that they're videos. Um, shorter videos they're happy to watch longer videos they say fuck you big eklovich you suck um so maybe i won't do that anymore i'll do short ones uh therefore i guess i better get on with the countdown um if i'm gonna do that um so i figured today i'd talk about the saga of the death of my car whose name is Bumblebee um, back in 2013 I got rear-ended by somebody when I was coming out of a parking lot and uh, it cracked the bumper of my Kia Optima that I drove at the time and so when we took it in to uh, get it fixed at the auto body shop they said, you know what, your car is old and shitty, so we're not gonna fix it because it's not worth it. It's gonna cost like $3,000 and your car's not even worth that much, so F you. And instead they gave me how much money my car was worth, which was fine for me at the time because um, that I, I, did, I think I didn't owe anything on that car anymore. It was scot-free, so getting money was okay well I've got this money that I can put toward another car a new, a new car and uh, my wife really wanted to get a Fiat she had a thing for Fiat's at the time I guess she probably still does but at the time she was really into it she knew somebody who just gotten a Fiat and she just really wanted a Fiat and so we went and we went to the Fiat dealership and they had a nearly new Fiat. It had like, I don't know, five, six thousand miles on it. And uh, we bought that Fiat. And I don't know if you know Fiat's well. Uh, they are relatively new in the United States. Um, I mean, obviously they've been around forever, but uh, they, I think they came to the United States years ago, then went away from the United States, and then they came back the United States so like 2012 or 2011 maybe 2010 was when they first reappeared on our shores just kind of washing up in the, in the ocean and um, so they're tiny uh, they're really small cars and that's the reason why I thought it would be fine to get a Fiat is because I wanted a car that got really good gas mileage because I had a 45 minute drive um, to work every day. And the less we spent on gas, the better. So we got this little bitty Fiat um, to try and get good gas mileage. And for a while I was really religious, keeping track of the gas mileage. Uh, I would, you know, put in my mileage and my gas into an app uh, every time that I filled up and uh, it was fun to see where my gas mileage wound up at you know sometimes it was I mean it was always really close to 40 but it was always not quite at 40 and then one day finally I managed to get above 40 on a tank of gas and I was so excited and I pretty much at right there I just said okay I guess I don't need to keep track anymore and I stopped which doesn't make a lot of sense but uh, yeah, I, I was getting 40 miles to the gallon for uh, gas on that car, and it was a really nice car. 
It was weird for me to have this car because it was basically a new car. And I had not ever owned a new car. I was not a guy who drove new cars. I always had used cars. They were generally crappy used cars. The uh, Kia Optima that uh, I had gotten rid of when uh, I got rear-ended had this issue that it would, and we couldn't ever figure out what the problem was. It would uh, just on occasion, there, there was no knowing when, but you would go to get into the car and start it and you would get absolutely nothing. No, no, it wouldn't turn, it wouldn't crank, it was nothing. And there was nothing wrong with the battery. There was, we, we tried to figure out what the heck the problem with it was and we never figured it out. It was just nothing wrong with it, but it wouldn't start. I mean, obviously there's something wrong with it, but we never figured out what it was. And then without doing anything, I could just sit and wait for a half hour, an hour, and then come back out, start it, and it starts right up. It turns over, power came on. It was super frustrating. And I always had cars that were like that, so having a brand new car, or nearly brand new car, was weird for me, you know? Having one that was nice, that wasn't filthy, that uh, wasn't, you know, all the things broken in it, and so forth, it was pretty neat. Uh, for a guy like me, for a schlub like me. And uh, it handled really, really well. I'd also never driven a car that that uh, was just so nimble. You know, you could do anything with it. You, you drive all the way past a parking spot and you could still turn all the way around and get into it normally. Because it was so, I mean, it was small and it could, I swear, it was almost like it was uh, riding on one giant middle wheel instead of four wheels on either end. It was just, I don't know, I mean, basically what I'm saying is I, I really liked that car. I liked it a lot. And it was a tiny little car. Um, and because of that, that's why I named it Bumblebee. Uh, I have a tendency to name a lot of my electronics. Jesus, a guy turning left and he's got his phone up like this as he's trying to drive. He's just, wow, that was as blatant and uh, stupid as I've seen somebody. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I named it Bumblebee. Um, I have a tendency to name all my electronics. It started back when I got my first computer, which I named Megatron. Although I was trying to name it Optimus Prime, and, and it just... Windows didn't allow me that many characters to, uh, to name the drive. And so I named it uh, Megatron instead. And then um, I got a new computer, which I continued the name Megatron with. And then eventually when I got a third computer, years after that, that one became uh, named Optimus Prime. So my computer presently is Optimus Prime. I have various drives, my, my thumb drives, I named all after Soundwave's um, tapes that transformed into stuff. So I've got Laserbeak and I've got Rumble and Ravage and uh, Frenzy and what else do I have? A rat Bat. Uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I've got I've got them all. I even looked up once because I don't I didn't know all the names of them, but um, I had to name them something. Uh, my uh, external hard drive that went to my computer I named Unicron because you know it was a great big many terabyte hard drive, so you know it has to be named the biggest transformer. Um, and I named my kids phones, names, like my daughter's cell phone is called RC, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, with, it, was, it was obvious when it was time to name my car that I should call it Bumblebee. Not because it was yellow, um, it was actually orange, like this copper, coppery orange color, but it, uh, it's kind of hot in here. I wish I could roll down the window. If I do, it'll get way too loud, so I won't do that. I just have to sweat until I finish the, the show. Um, but yeah, it wasn't the color of Bumblebee, but it was little like Bumblebee, and that was Bumblebee's thing. He was the smallest of the Autobots, the most frail of the Autobots, etc. Uh, 
he was recast as a Camaro later on, which kind of ruined what Bumblebee was, turned him into something completely different by the shithead Michael Bay. But um, before that, that's what Bumblebee was, and that's why I named my car Bumblebee. Um, anyways, yeah, I grew to love this car. And then, uh, the, how was it? It was the day before New Year's Eve, just uh, a few weeks ago. I was driving with my wife to uh, go to a restaurant for dinner. Pulled into the center lane, the suicide lane, some people call it, right behind a Ford. What am I hearing? Oh, I think that was a text tone <laughs> from my phone. Sorry, distraction. Uh, so I pulled in behind a F-150 truck that was sitting already waiting in the center lane to turn left. And uh, as I sat there, and I was you know, kind of looking off to the side, kind of pondering the whole process of turning into uh, this parking lot, suddenly this car just starts backing up. And uh, I wasn't even looking at the time, I was looking this direction, starts backing up. My wife is sitting in the uh, passenger seat. She starts screaming, ah, ah, ah. And it was about that useful, <laughs> sadly. And I went, oh crap. I reached down, grabbed the stick shift and tried to pop it into reverse so that I could get out of the way of this truck before he hits me. Unfortunately, I was flailing wildly. I was unable to get a hold of this shift in time. And so uh, my last resort was hit the horn. I hit the horn right about the same time he hit me. The guy backed right into us. Um, he says he looked in his mirrors, which, you know, that's debatable, who knows. But he didn't see us, which is possible. Again, Bumblebee was a very small car. Um, so he just backed right over the top of us. Uh, it was a tiny accident. He barely hit me. Um, probably going five miles an hour or something, you know. But his car was ginormous. It was a fucking F-150 like every goddamn person in the world has. And he just backed right into me. And uh, he had a trailer hitch. There wasn't a ball in the hitch, which probably made things slightly less damaging. But there was the hitch there, and that's probably what connected with my car. Uh, kind of crumpled in the hood a little bit. Uh, did some damage probably to the grill a little bit. Um, car still was drivable when it was done. Uh, I was able to back over. We pulled off to the side. I got his insurance information, which was all state. I now hate all state. But uh, at the time, I had no reason to hate them yet. Um, but he gave me his insurance, you know, and we went our way. This guy went off to never have to fucking deal with it again, and I went off to get shit all over. Um, so the next day I called Allstate, or actually probably that night I called Allstate and reported the uh, accident, and they said what I needed to do is get a little app. They have an app that you can get on a phone, and you take pictures with the app and it sends to them and they look at the pictures and they estimate the damage and so that's what i did the next morning i got the app took the pictures sent them into them um it was a saturday night i think and then uh, a sunday morning that i took the pictures and then you know monday was new year's day so there was uh not going to be a lot of action going on at, at that point. But on Tuesday, somebody called me and they said, okay, looks like according to our app that you will probably, it'll probably cost about, I think he said like $1,400 to fix your car. So uh, do you want a place to take it into or do you have your own place? And I said, I, I'm new here. Tell me where I should go. And so they sent me to an auto body shop. So take your car in there and 
get it taken care of there. We will, uh, you know, take care of everything, get you a rental, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, Wednesday, I went in, dropped my car off there, got a rental, and the guy, as I dropped my car off, said, yeah, I took a look at your car. I think Allstate's probably full of shit on this. I don't think it's gonna cost 1400. It's gonna be more than that, but we'll let you know. We'll, we'll get it all taken care of. Uh, he said, I'll, we'll get a hold of you um, Thursday, probably Friday at the latest. I thought, okay, cool. So I had a car, uh, it was a rental. So I started driving this rental car and waiting to hear from someone. And Thursday came, nobody called. He said, I thought, okay, well, he said Friday at the latest. Friday came, uh, I left for work, I leave kind of towards the afternoon time and then work through the afternoon. So left for work, still hadn't gotten called. I was expecting them to call me sometime, you know, before close of business on Friday. Um, of course, that point of the day is the busiest time of the day because there's a newscast at 4, one at 5, one at 6. So I was working on that and I didn't, you know, the, the close of business came and went. Nobody called me and I truthfully didn't even notice it until it was too late to call somebody and say, hey, what the hell? Uh, you guys didn't call. Um, so what's going on? Uh, and then, of course, it was Saturday and Sunday and then all of a sudden Monday... Worst of all, Monday after I'd gone to work, I get a call, and the call is from the Hertz uh, rent-a-car office in the um, body, auto body shop, and the guy says, hey, uh, you need to have your rental car back today. Today's the last day that Allstate uh, has authorized your rental car for. And I said, what? They haven't even called me to tell me about my car. They haven't anything. I haven't heard from anyone, and they're just cutting me off in the rental car. They're just cutting me loose. They're not going to make sure that it's taken care of first. Um, and the guy's like, oh, well, you have, oh, well, let me take a look here. Uh, and then he, he goes, oh, uh, from what I can tell here, they've declared your car as a total loss. And I went, oh, shit. I was afraid that was going to happen. I was afraid my car was not going to survive this stupid little accident. But I, I thought that, you know, the early uh, indicators were that it was going to be fine. But now, with the new estimate for how much it was actually going to cost to fix the car, uh, now it was, sorry, your car uh, is not going to make it and they've decided to make it a total loss. So they decided this, but they didn't call me about it. They didn't tell me anything. Uh, when did they decide this even? Was it Thursday? Was it Friday? Was it Monday? I tried to call, uh, I had my wife call the guy um, who was our uh, insurance agent that we were working with for this uh, thing, because I was at work, so I couldn't really uh, spend my time dealing with that kind of stuff. So she tried to call them, she calls them up, and it was like almost five o'clock, and they're like, oh, uh, yeah, he's gone um, on vacation, your uh, insurance adjuster, but uh, just hold, hold on for a minute, we'll get somebody that can talk to you and take care of you and tell you what you need to know. So they put her on hold. And then they fucking went home. She sat on hold for about 45 minutes to an hour. No one ever came back. And then when she called back, they were just like, mm, I'm sorry, we're closed now. Called back in the morning. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was so unbelievably pissed off that anyone would do something like that. Um, such bullshit. So, my um, wife says, no, you're going to have to deal with this in the morning. I'm not calling again. I sat on hold for an hour, damn it. Uh, although my wife would never say damn it. She said, D darn it. 
Um, and so, yeah, that's what I had to do. I called the next day. Uh, I couldn't get a hold of anybody. So I, I eventually, actually, I did that that night. I called their 1 800 number that night after my wife said, No, this is your deal. I am not dealing with it anymore. Uh, I called their 1 800 number and talked to somebody, and the guy said, Oh, yeah, your car is a total loss, and now your agent is this other person. It's not the guy that you were with before, because now that it's a total loss, you have to have a total loss agent. So I was handed off to somebody and forgotten about, apparently. Um, I called that person, and they said, we're very uh, interested in returning your call right away, so please leave a detailed message with your claim number and stuff, and we'll call you back as soon as possible. So I left all that info. The next day, they didn't call. They didn't call at all. Nobody called. So, so I called them the next day, and I said, hey, uh, and I got, again, the uh, answering machine, left another message, said, hey, I still haven't heard from anyone. What's going on? Uh, I got, you know, shunted off to you. So what's the deal now? Where do we go from here? Uh, they made me give back my rental car, which is really upsetting. Luckily, I had uh, other transportation. This junker of an old SUV. Um, so I wasn't totally screwed, but I was pissed. Pissed at this point that I've been getting... I mean, it's been a full week at this point, And they still haven't called me back or told me anything. And so... Uh, finally, later that day, this chick calls me and she says, Oh, uh, so like I'm the, the person who does the paperwork. Um, you really need to call this guy. He's your total loss agent. You have to deal with him. So I call him, leave a message for him, wait a day, get no response, wait another day, call him again, wait a day. Um, so anyways, don't use Allstate. If you have any possibility, uh, any other option for insurance, don't use Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate is bullshit. It doesn't mean anything. It's an advertising slogan that they don't stand by. They are a gigantic, uh, you know, monolithic corporation. They just hand people off from here to there. They're, you might as well be working with the fucking government with all the, uh, the crap that you get. You might as well be waiting in line at the damned DMV for the uh, user experience you're going to get with Allstate. Just stay away from them. Uh, buy your policy from someone else. Uh, it turns out I actually have a policy with them right now. It's my homeowner's policy, and I will make sure that that gets changed as soon as possible. I am so unbelievably pissed off at these people, and it's not done yet. Uh, finally, uh, this guy calls me uh, and says, oh, okay, uh, tell me about your car. What kind of features does it have? You know, he goes through all this stuff to find out what kind of features my car has above and beyond the normal, etc. cetera. And, um, and then he says, okay, uh, let me submit it to find out what uh, an offer you'll get for your car. How much we will pay you, or what your car is worth, basically. Uh, and this, this is where I, I want to scream and just want to punch somebody. Um, so yeah, instantly he says, okay, submit. And as he's saying, oh yeah, sometimes this takes a while, I may have to call you back because uh, sometimes it can take hours before we know exactly what it's going to be worth. And, oh, oh no, here it is. It's already back. He hasn't even finished saying. They've already gone. They've already looked. They've already decided that my car is worth $1,000 less than I still owe the bank for it. Now, 
Before the jackass hit me with his truck that he couldn't see out the damn back window of, it was worth what I owed for it because it worked. It still ran, it was still fine, it was wonderful. But now, oh, not only is it dead, through no fault of my own, I also will owe the bank a thousand dollars for it uh, as soon as... And the, the one thing I don't understand about it is they gave me four thousand dollars of the five thousand that I owed and then they get my car! Why do they get my car? They take it off of my hands. How do they get that? I, they didn't buy the damned thing from me. Why do they get the car? Uh, I should be able to, you know, auction it off. Because their jackass client's the one that hit me. <sighs> so Bumblebee's gone. Um, I go to uh, the auto body shop and I get to see my car for one last time and you know it's weird uh, it was really sad <laughs> I know that it shouldn't be this way it's a car it's not a person um, but I was really sad I come around the corner to, to get whatever belongings that I had in the car out and there's my car and it's half stripped it's all pulled apart. They've taken the front end off of it. Um, it looked bad. It looked like, I don't know, I felt like I walked into the hospital and, you know, seen like my friend or somebody just all beat up with a black eye and like cuts and, you know, bandages on, her, on their head or something like that. It was just, it was kind of upsetting. Uh, this is my car, and, and now it's gone. And I just got to take whatever remainders that were in it out and kiss it goodbye. And that was it. And I, I was bummed. I was really bummed about it. And um, for a while, I, I tried to haggle with... Uh, Allstate to try and tell them that, hey, you know, you I, I owe this much. You really ought to, you know, do right and pay me all of what I owe, not shortchange me like this bullshit. But they've got billion-dollar lobbyists and shit on their side. They've got laws that say everyone must have insurance. They've got so much money. Uh, they're 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 being paid for nothing. They're being paid for in the event they're mobsters. They're just fucking mobsters, you know. They're like the the mobsters that walk into somebody's business and say, "Oh, it's a nice business you got here. Be a shame if something were to happen to it." Um, yeah. And you know they're not they're they're selling you protection from themselves almost. I mean, they're not quite that, obviously, because they're... But the worst part is, when my, uh, what they were going to pay me comes up short, they have the gall to say, do you have gap insurance? Their fucking answer is, get insurance to protect yourself from insurance. Yeah, that's mobsters. That is mobsters right there. Buy more insurance so that insurance can't hurt you. Uh, what? Anyways, if you can't tell, I hate insurance. I hate insurance companies. They ne- like, one of those, one of those things that you get with health insurance, you know, somebody's got cancer, and they're dying, and they're getting chemotherapy, and they're spending the rem the, their last remaining days trying to fight with the insurance company to get them to cover their life-saving uh, stuff that's being performed on them, the chemotherapy and stuff. They have the fucking temerity to say, oh, no, that stuff's it's experimental. It's not covered by our policy. 
um, it's like maybe I've read too many John Grisham books, but you know, The Rainmaker, if you've ever read that, that is what I think all insurance companies are. And Allstate surely didn't disabuse me of that notion. Instead, they made it seem I, I, all I needed was the the letter that came from him saying, you must be stupid, stupid, stupid. Because uh, that was really all I was lacking from Allstate for it to be the John Grisham story. Uh, anyways, so I had to say goodbye to my car. Not only did I have to say goodbye to my car, but the bonus that my wife got um, for uh, work this year. She works, she, she works really hard and she is one of the best workers uh, where she works. She got a small bonus, was gonna use it to pay off a vacation to New York that she was taking with my daughter for her 16th birthday. They went to New York for a couple days. She was gonna use her bonus to pay that off. Instead, we got to use the bonus to pay $900 of our car off. And now we're kind of screwed and on the hook for this uh, New York trip. So it's time to tighten the belt, stop wasting money um, as if we knew how to do that. So my car is gone. Uh, it's all paid off. And right now I'm driving this car, which uh, we got a, a year ago for my son to use to shuttle around his little brother and sister. Uh, they, um, right now they mostly just take the bus to school and they don't, they don't go anywhere else. They're total homebodies. They have no friends because we moved out of town. And so they don't use the car, so it's not really a big deal that I'm driving it all the time. But the big deal about it is that I got a long drive. And this thing is a gas guzzler. As a matter of fact, I'm almost out of gas. I should have got some before I started this uh, this podcast. Um, yeah, so I'm driving this for now. I'll probably drive it for a couple of months until... Uh, our credit is clear from our other loan, so we can take out another loan, get another car. Um, my wife is talking about getting another Fiat. She actually wants, I think she wants to get a Fiat for herself this time. She wants to shunt her, her new car that she just got, because we just got one uh, a few months ago, because right when we tried to move to uh, Houston, our minivan died on us just straight up died out of the blue engine totally blown um so she's got a relatively new car it's a ford fiesta which you know i guess whatever it's nothing special it's a uh, soulless commuter car i guess to match my soulless life um <laughs> But anyways, yeah, that's what I've got right now. Uh, once again, I just want to uh, remind everybody, do not use Allstate. They will treat you like a number, not a person. You will not be important to them. Um, I want to get the word out to as many people as I can because fuck Allstate, dude. I hate them. Treated me like shit and they deserve what they get for doing it. I, I just hope I can uh, convince as many people as possible to not give their money to them. Because um, they suck. Uh, but yeah, so that's what's going on. I'm driving the uh, SUV for a while. So hopefully I won't suck and I'll get more of these podcasts out. Um, I actually have a, another one that I was going to do, but I, I kind of went a little longer than I meant to. Um, so I'll probably have to do it tomorrow. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my plan for this new year, which is already getting old, uh, is to do a, a short ankle cast, if at all possible, once a week, but at the very least three times a month. I, I'm, I'm, I want to be as good as Rich Shanfield. 
That guy's uh, kicking butt with his podcast, so I totally need to uh, step it up. So, anyway, uh, hopefully we'll be getting more uh, ankle casts coming your way. So, yeah, thanks for uh, watching, listening. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will talk to you in probably more measured tones next time. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you later. Ankovich out!